I want to also greet you with this special greeting. Happy New Year, my beloved people, church. I just want to say thank you to all of you who worked hard last year. But I want to give you just one advice because that's not what I'm going to preach about. If you want next year to be a better for you than the, the past one, serve Jesus more. There's no more satisfaction. There's no more fulfillment. Uh, when you, as when you fulfill the calling, the mission, the purpose of your existence. If you're going to do that, I can assure you, you'll be most happy and satisfied and blessed person in the world. But if you're going to get a lot of money and a lot of good stuff, you might be very miserable, still miserable people. So I hope that you're going to take the challenge and will serve Jesus with passion the next year. I also excited to announce to you that next week, next Sundays, we will have a communion service and we're going to begin our time of fasting. Who are excited about fasting? Yes. This is the most amazing season for the church. But some of you have a hard time fasting. So let me give you some, uh, some quick direction what you need to start doing. If you really want to enjoy fasting, you need to start preparation today. And this is what you need to. You need to cut off on the sweets. Who likes the sweets? Praise the Lord. Me too. <laughs> but you know what? If, if you don't want a headache for four days, start cutting off. Tomorrow, even today, if you want, if you like coffee, maybe for a couple of days, start drinking decaf, and then go to minimum, drink some tea instead, uh, because for the four days you might have a huge headache. Some people faint at eleven o'clock Monday of the first day of fasting. If you don't want to faint, <laughs> hey, <laughs> stop, start preparing. If you like some, some good stuff, like a, like a greasy thing that's so tasty, cut it off. Start doing this. When you're going to prepare, and the last one, the fourth, pray. Ask Holy Spirit to enable you, to help you. I think the best helper for, helper for me sometimes is the Holy Spirit. Because I'm, I'm becoming weak sometimes. And, and when he inspires me, encourages me, empowers me, I, have, I, I always have the best time of fasting. So may the Lord bless you. But today we're going to continue the last uh, message of our series, the Christmas series that we, we began. Um, and it was called Rediscover Christ Within Christmas. We used um, Isaiah chapter 9. Uh, and we use the verse 6. I'm going to read it again. For a child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. And the government will, be, will rest upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God. Eternal Father. Prince of Peace. Today we're going to speak about the Prince of Peace. I think Prince of Peace is the most beautiful name that Jesus carried. It's, it's a prince of peace. And the reason he was given this beautiful name, because he came to satisfy the deepest need of your soul. We have a need. We have a very essential needs in order to survive. We need to eat. We need to drink. We need to breathe. And this is, this is the deed of our body. But there is something in someone inside of us. That's your personality. And there is a huge need in your life. And that need is to, to be empowered. To be, uh, to be empowered by Jesus. That's why he was called Prince of Peace. It means that you can find peace in Him. There's no peace anywhere else, but you can actually discover and find and receive peace from Him. So my job today is actually speak to you, give you a little inspiration, give you a little teaching, and I do want to call for the prayer. So what is peace? 
I mean, especially for the young people, peace, if, if, you, if your papa and mama are not mad at you, you're probably in peace. <laughs> but there's some more. What is peace, actually? Uh, in, the, in the Bible, uh, the special Hebrew word for peace is used, shalom. It's, it's used in the reference of calm, calmness, and uh, this, this English uh, word, tranquility. It's when everything inside of you is very calm i think that's the most amazing feeling that people is looking around the reason jesus came carrying this uh, this name is because that's one of the biggest greatest need of the humanity is to find peace peace is a harmony it's just like a one accord when you when when people sing when uh, when the instrument play it is so beautiful when when this guitar is is tuned to harmony then every string play the music it flows it's it just gives us so much pleasure pleasure same thing with our soul. Our soul is like a very complex instrument. It's, it's much more complex than guitar, than piano, or any other thing. And it's needed to be tuned. And no one else can tune it by the peace of God. What's the absence of peace? It's a troubled heart. Do you know what the troubled heart is? When we're troubled. Fearful heart is a peace, is a heart without peace. Anxious heart is the peace, is a heart without peace. Worrying heart is the heart of our peace. And in reality, we, every one of us needs so much peace. Because our heart is so sensitive. Girls, your heart is so sensitive that you sometimes, you feel fine until somebody give you the bad look. And then you look at your mirror and you hate yourself suddenly. Someone give you bad comments. comments. Somebody cut, your, your, cut you off on the free, freeway. Someone tell you something. Something was disrespectful. Somebody, somebody did not even say hello to you. And your heart become troubled. To me, it's like you put the liquid in, in, some, in something and, and when it's in peace, it's just so, so in peace. There's no waves. There's no emo commotions. And when the God's peace comes to our heart, this is what happened. We experience this amazing reality of our soul. There are so many trouble today. In the humanity, you know, the government who doesn't have a peace, they, they build bombs, you know. Do you know why so much nuclear bombs still getting created? Because we electing the government who has no peace. They dream that every night some, somebody has an evil, uh, evil heart and they're going to bomb us sometime. We have so much tr trouble today in the social media. And I would uh, advise you to use less social media in 2022. Why? Because there is so many people who has no peace in their heart. And they preach and they spread all kind of uh, nonsense there. And it's affect our life. It is come to your heart. And suddenly your life, your personality gets messed up and affected because someone who has no peace spoke to your life with some kind of message with some kind of wise words peace is important why human needs peace why do you need peace because peace provides us the highest quality of life let me re re repeat that the highest quality of life does not come because you drive in very expensive car. In reality, it gives you some kind of worries. You cannot park your car where everybody parks. You need to park somewhere where there's no one parked next to you. When you pay the bill every, every, every beginning of the month, you just write in, uh, a big check there and you think, what am I doing? I mean, it, it, the house... 
the goods does not provide you peace. But peace gives you, provides you the highest quality of life. If you ever see the tree, the best, the most beautiful uh, picture of any trees in when, when they come. Have you, have you sensed that, felt that? When you look at the tree and every leaf is just a quiet, it just don't move, don't shake. That's the most beautiful picture. Do you know why? Because our soul wants to be in peace exactly like that tree. If you if you ever been on the ocean, the most beautiful ocean is when it is in peace. When it does not roar, but when it's whisper, the waves just like just a little waves. This for 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 some for some reason this most captivating uh, scenery. Why? Because our soul needs peace. In the winter time, when you travel where the snow is, the most amazing reality when the f- snowflakes just flow slowly with no winds. That's the most amazing thing. And we like that. Do you know why we like that? Because that's the image of peace. And your soul desires that. Why? Because peace in reality provides you the highest quality of life. The second thing that peace gives to you is gives you wisdom. Peace gives you the wisdom. Any decision you make, any response that you do, any work, any action that you do outside of peace, most of the time you will regret about it. And the next thing that peace does to your life, it is the seed and the fruit of righteousness. There are so many times people doing the wrong thing. Why? Because they don't have a peace. Do you know why so many people turn to alcohol? Because there's, there's, no, there's nothing good in alcohol. It just makes people dizzy. It makes people weak. It makes people act foolishly. Then why people go into alcohol? Because they're looking for something. Somehow, somehow, because the, the, the storms in their heart so big that they're looking for any cure, anything, but the good news for you and me that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. So the peace is the seed and the fruit of righteousness. Let me give you the scripture, so let's read it together. James chapter 3, verse 15. This wisdom, James listed some actions of people i'm not gonna name them for the sake of time but but he actually continues this this wisdom is not that which come down from above but it is earthly natural demonic listen earthly natural demonic the devil sometimes have access to your soul only because you and i sometimes so so negligent that we apply the wisdom that is this earthly for where jealousy and selfish ambitious ambition exist there is a disorder and every evil things when there is no peace, let me summarize it. There's disorder and uh, every evil things. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable. Pay attention to the word peaceable, gentle, reasonable, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering, without hypocrisy. Anybody wants to live a life without hypocrisy? Man, hypocrisy is a big thing in a Christian's life. Then listen, here's the answer. And the seed of those fruits is righteousness, is sown in peace by those who make peace. 
In reality, this is what James says. The peace is so important because out of, outside of peace, you're not going to act uh, wisely. Your actions, your thoughts, your emotions, your feelings, what you feel, what you react, it's not going to be a wisdom. It's going to be a foolishness. It's going to be the, the, the earthly wisdom. It's going to be demonic wisdom in your life. So that's why we need the peace that comes from the peace Prince of Peace, he is amen to that. The next thing that the peace is the best guard of your heart. You know, we, we all need some, some level of security. We need the guard. You know that your body is guarded by skin? Skin is your guard for all the organs inside of you. Your brain has a guard. Do you know that this, this thing is very solid <laughs> thing? It's not just for your, your handsomeness or beautiness. It's to protect your brain. It's so good that it actually looks good too. But the main goal is to protect your brain because your brain is so important. But at the same time, your soul is so important. Do you know who can guard your soul? The peace of God can guard your soul. And let me read it to you. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. And the peace of God which surpasses all comprehension will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So if you need someone to guard your mind, to guard your thinking, to guard your emotions, your feelings, your decisions, your will, it's the peace of the Lord. It's the peace of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But how does the peace look like in the, in the real man? What is the peaceful life? And I think Jesus is actually portrayed. He's not only prince of peace to give you the peace. He actually was, was expression of the life of peace. And I think the best example, you remember the story where Jesus was in the boat traveling from one side to another one with his disciples and there was a storm in the sea and this is the exact image of peace he was sleeping like a baby in the crib <laughs> all the shaking was actually supporting his sleep but not everyone in that boat experienced the same thing. The people were terrified. His disciples, his, the, the professional fishermen, they were not the first time in the water. They, they actually lived the life in the water. But they were so terrified in the way that they actually have to wake up with the complaint. Jesus, don't you care that we are about to drown? Jesus almost said, hey guys, I had so good nap. <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? What's wrong with you? Peter, come here. <laughs> Peter, where were you? <laughs> you were supposed to be uh, the, control the situation here. No, he actually get up. He rebuked them. And he rebuked the storm. So the image of peace is this. You need to understand it. You need to see it. Because this, in that picture, there's, there's so many lessons to us. Number one, when peace of the Lord comes to your heart, you can actually relax in the worst storm in your life. When the peace of Jesus, when the peace that comes from the Prince of Peace will hit your heart, you can be so rested even in the calamity. But the, the, the point number two in this story is this, that sometimes people look for peace in the life like this. We want everything to be perfect and then we're some kind of in peace. I know my wife, she's in peace when everything is clean in the house. But my peace is stronger than her. <laughs> I can admit that too, for sure. 
So here's how we look for the peace. If everything in our life is solid and peaceful and, and the way we want it, then we can relax. If we have a good job and, and we have a raise every, every, every time, good raise every time. If our family, our friends is so nice to us, if we respect it, if our, if our goal in life is actually coming up, if, if no one saying us negative thing, if, if bank account is full of money, if we have a good car, good, good this and good that, then we pretty much allow ourselves to become in peace. And that's the wrong way. Jesus is saying is this, that our earth, you will never get into this kind of reality because as you serve Jesus, you're going to face a lot, of, a lot of the work of the enemy against you. He's going to bring storm after storm. He's going to try to get rid of your peace. He wants to steal it from you. But you need to understand, even the worst, the deadly storm, you can have a peace like Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise the Lord. Because when God shows up. Do you know what's happened? What, what's happened to you when, when you in the presence of Jesus? Sometimes, I mean, I, mean I, I had to serve people very often, every day. And some of the situation of people's life is, is very difficult and very complex. There's a lot of reason for tears. There's a lot of reason for, for, for suffering in people's life. And they do it. But when I minister to them, this is what I noticed. The first miracle that happened to them, suddenly nothing changed in their reality. But the heart changed. The peace comes. The peace comes. And when, when they enter my, my, my office sometimes, they almost in a panic mode. They're ready to quit. They're ready to quit life. They're ready to quit everything. They're ready to actually just, just disappear from this earth. But after the presence of God come to, to that room, after the presence of the Holy Spirit will, will fill the heart of these people, the first thing that happened to them, they receive peace. Sometimes I would ask them, how do you feel? They will tell me, I feel peace. Peace is so good. Especially when it comes from the Prince of Peace. Jesus was not only sleeping or was having calmness in his heart. He was actually was, was guided by peace. The best guide, the, the, the guide that works every time in my life. God speaks to me. He revealed to me. But sometimes he's not. But he still guides my, my decision. Especially, you know, when I do a personal decision, I, you know, I'm ready to pay the price. You know, if I made a wrong choice, I'm ready to pay the price. But I have, when I had to make a decision for the church, for some of you people, uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure if I'm ready that you would pay the price for my mistake. So that's why I always seek for his guidance. Sometimes he will speak to me through his words. Sometimes he will speak to me in, in, through his voice. Sometimes he will speak to me different way. But he always speak to me through peace. Always. This is how Jesus was, was guided. This is how Jesus was led. He was actually walking in the peace. And if, you, if you're going to study his life, this is what you will recognize. Sometimes there will be a moment when the, the heart of Jesus will be troubled. Do you know how he recognized that, that Judah will be the one who is going to uh, betray him? He says there was a, there was a, like a communion service. They washed the, the, the feet. Jesus washed them a feet and, the, and he was speaking to them. And suddenly his heart will be troubled. And he says, surely I'm saying to you that one of, one of you will betray me. And then he go, goes back to the peace. You know? So he was guided. This was the moment when his heart, when his peace, peace will be shaken, when he would lose that, that peace. And this is the moment that he would, would actually seek the, the Father. He would seek for the armies of God because this only could be cured and fixed by the presence of Almighty God. Your life, God wants to lead your life by the peace in your heart. 
He wants you to take you so, so deep that you will recognize when you have peace and when you don't. When you're troubled, when you're anxious, or when you're in total peace. And that's when th this is, leads us to the last point and how to get, how to restore peace in your heart. He is the Prince of Peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, but, but the question is how you can restore your peace. In the Old Testament, let me give you a real, real overview. I'm not going to take a lot of times. There was different kind of offerings. The offerings was, was people had to take the animals. They had to take it to the priest, slather it, and burn it as an offering to God. But some, one of the offerings was called peace offering. So there was a prescription of, uh, that God gave to, to the priest in some cases when people has to, let's say they gave wives, but they could not fulfill it. They had to bring some, some uh, uh, they had to redeem it. Uh, they had to, uh, there, there is also prescribed some, some of the things, that, uh, some of the goods and, and even money that he has to pay. But also he has to do a peace offering. So there was a peace offering um, that, that will, will allow a person who did not feel this connection with the Lord to come and restore that through giving some offerings but in the new testament because jesus is the prince of peace number one you need to receive him as a prince of peace because he was the one he was the one he was the one who gave himself to the offering on the cross let me tell you something about the peace offering in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, in the peace offering, that's the only offering when, when the person who brought the offering could, could eat the same, let's say, meat. He would leave something for himself. And let me tell you, communion is the sign of the peace offering. Because in the communion, we, we not just uh, receive Christ, but Christ share himself with us. We, we partake something that does not belong to us. And this is the, the, the sign of the peace that God has with you. Hallelujah. But there's one more scripture. And we're going to pray. Philipp Philippians, be anxious for nothing. But in every way, in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So the best way, if you believe in Christ as a Prince of Peace, the best way, as soon as the anxiousness, the trouble uh, hit your heart. You go to your room and in the prayer, with supplication, with thanksgiving, you talk to Father, you talk to Jesus. And you say to Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, it is not good for me to, to be anxious. It is not good for me to live with a troubled heart. It is not good to, to me because I'm going to be uh, make a foolish mistakes. Father, I need your help. I, this case, this problem, this issue in my life, this challenge that I'm facing, I'm with thanksgiving given to you and in instead I receive your peace that is higher than my understanding that's how you do it before Jesus was crucified he come to his disciples like, like I'm preaching today and he says this is he, he said to them Peace I live with you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled. Not let it be fearful. See, look at the disciples. They blowed it. They missed it. They ignored it. They did not apply it to their life. They did not, uh, you know, treat it as something very valuable. That's why a couple days later, when Jesus was taken, when he, Jesus was arrested, they acted like, a, like they betrayed Christ. You know why? Because they were so fearful. 
Here it is. Jesus is saying to them, I give you, I give you my, I leave you my peace. I will give you again and again and again. When the, when the, when the fear is going to knock to your heart, I'm going to supply you with a new dose, new portion of peace. But you, what you need to do, you need to receive it. And that's why they acted so foolishly. They ran away. They betrayed, they renounced Christ. They betrayed him. And that's why when Jesus, after he rose again, the, the, do you know what he did to them? When he showed up to them, what did he tell them? He did not say, how are you doing, guys? I'm back. <laughs> he says, peace be to you. Peace be to you. Can we all rise up? Can I speak to you? If God will give you the x-ray, the spiritual x-ray. If he would show you the entire, your life. You would recognize that many things that you've done was not out of peace. Many foolish things that you've done. Maybe you, you're still proud of them. But they were not the wisdom of God. Many things that you said. Many things that you taught. Many things that, that you accomplished. It was, it was not out of the presence of peace. So today, Jesus is here to correct it all. By his name. By his peace, by his reign in peace. We were singing, we were worshiping today at the beginning of the service, and we say, You reign, Jesus, reign on us, reign, reign upon us, reign, Jesus, be you, 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 the, the king, you, the Lord. Your kingdom is so powerful. And I pray today that the Lord is going to visit your heart by his peace. It doesn't matter if you like my preaching today or not, but I'm, not, I'm sure that you need some peace. And I want to pray for those people who are really, really bothered by some anxiety. There's so huge Trouble today, so big issue within society, it's an anxiety. Some people could not sleep just because one thought penetrated their mind with some, with some trouble in their heart. And then for the rest of the night, they just, they just, they couldn't fall asleep. Maybe some of you hear that you lost your quality of life, the beauty of life. You just suffer every day because of the thoughts, because of the, of the thinking that you think, reality that you see, the trouble that you fear, the problem that you're facing, and the best way. Let me speak to you again. The best way to conquer every problem it is from the position of Peace. When the Prince of Peace will take away all the worries and trouble hard will, will come down. It become a, a beautiful image of peace. Out of this condition you can hear him. You can be directed by the Holy Spirit. He can give you words that, the, that will, will conquer the storm. Like Jesus, he wake up. And he know what to do. He wants his peace to be even given to the sea. That's why he says, hey. Almost like silent. Come down. And the waves like become peaceful. Father. If you need the prayer, if you want the church to pray for you, 
I invite you to the altar. But if you're not going to come, I'm still going to pray for all of us. Because all of us need the peace. Hallelujah. We need peace to serve Jesus. We need peace to serve our family. We need peace to have a smile in our faces. We need peace to continue life. We need peace to follow the direction of the Holy Spirit.